Hello and welcome to New Guitar Review. This time I have the pleasure to introduce you my latest acquisition, a beautiful Skirvan Swan in the 7 string version. Skirvan Guitars of Skirvan is a custom shop that makes guitars and buses out of Poland in Europe. They started their career in 2011, if I'm not mistaken, and it was uh, the second day of May, which is also my birthday, that's why I remember that, that date. And since then, they achieved a very good reputations among players all over the world. I am a scurvous analyst, and that fact won't affect my judgment on this guitar. And going to tell you my real opinion on this beautiful guitar. Okay, let's start with basic specifications. The body is made of two pieces of mahogany. Mahogany, apart from adding weight to the guitar, also adds warmth and depth to the sound. So that's why I chose that timbre. Over the body we find a poplar barrel top with those dark spots over there. That's the, the barrels. The poplar barrel uh, adds some kind of harmonic uh, freshness and um, height to the tone to contrast with the Mahogany body. Also, it's very warm and that in combination with a third layer that is in between the popular bird and the Mahikani body can you see that dark layer over here is very thin but this is rosewood that also adds warmth to the tone well uh, this fact having three layers is only because this one is custom shop guitar and not all the guitars that are made out from Skirvison have three layers. The normal ones are two, two pieces, top and body, but not intermediate layer. Well, uh, the fretboard is made of dark ebony and beneath that fretboard we can find a five piece neck. This is Vingi or Venge, and these two purple stripes are made of purple heart. Pur purple, purple heart, sorry, is a substitutive to the Vuvinga that usually was in combination, a very good combination with um, with Vingi to add mid range to the tone. Uh, due to city's regulations, this is not allowed to be um, as frequent, frequently as was in the past. So now, to avoid that regulations, uh, manufacturers tend to use purple horn. Okay, as we can see, the neck is bolted on with these five bolts. Yeah. Continuing on the neck, we can find here the volute to add a stability to the neck. And here we have the hip shot upper gear locking tuners. On the front of the headstock, we find the same finish of the body and a radical headstock shape that is called Viper. This is the Viper headstock. And now I'm going to stop here and talk about the history of the Viper Hatstock. This particular shape was developed by Thomas Musha. I hope I spelled correctly. If not, I'm sorry, Thomas. And it was, as I said, it was created by him. Um, with some inspiration of the black machine style shapes but with modern twist over here with this pointy zone um, and that was developed five years ago so 
uh, in 2017, Thomas and Scarverson decided to make a limited run of raptors and swans to celebrate that anniversary because this is one of the most popular Scarverson uh, headstock shapes. That run consists, if I am not wrong, on 20 guitars. Some of them, or majority of them, were raptors, and some very few were swans. With that headstock, because in Scrivison you can choose your favorite body shape and pair it with your favorite headstock shape. You are not limited to have, for example, raptor body with raptor headstock or swan body with swan headstock. You can have swan body with viper headstock like this, swan body with 019 headstock, um, raptor body with nevelung headstock and something like that. So uh, they made that limited run that also had a um, distinctive inlay on 12th fret consists of, an, of a B made of aluminum lay that also represents uh, the, f the f number 5 in Roman, Roman numbers to the 5th anniversary and the V of the Piper. Well, the Piper Hardsock uh, has a problem. Okay? This part here is very weak. So when you have a high tension on the strings, it tends to bend the headstock towards the front of the fretboard. Not at first, but when you have your guitar for a long time, the guitar, the, the headstock of the guitar tends to bend a bit, just a bit, not not too much. But that. It's a problem because it's not perfectly aligned and the the angle between the strings over the fretboard to the neck to uh, sorry to the headstock it's not correct. So to avoid this uh Scarfison developed what they call the Alutech. The Alutech is a very thin layer of aluminium it's a plate really between the top veneer and the neck timbers. So that's, that, um, that aluminum plate adds a stability to the headstock and avoids the bend. Okay, let's continue. Here we find a dark or black ebony truss rod cover and here, a string dampener. Yeah, you, many of you will put a piece of foam beneath the strings to avoid vibrations and to eliminate some odd harmonics. Um, by default, in the Scarvison guitars, they put this dampener over here, so you don't need to put foam. Another piece of gear that people use to avoid that kind of frequencies is this, the groove gear. Uh, you can put it or you can just use the uh, Skervison dampener. Okay, Here we have a graph tech nut, very stable, very good. And over here, 24 stainless steel threads in the fan fret configuration. Well, what's fan fret? Or angle frets? If you watched my other reviews, you know, you already know what is the fan fret. But if not, I will explain very quickly. Well, the fan fret is a system that instead of having parallel threads all across the fretboard, they are angled in a certain way, so you can have multiple um, multiple scales on your guitar. So, the scale on the 7th string from the saddle to the nut 
is 27 inches yeah? and scale on the first string from the saddle of the bridge to the mat is 25.4 so we have a spread of 1.6 inches between the first and seventh string why? well it's very known that baritone uh, scale guitars have a better tone on the low strings because they are more clear when you play chords and the note rings better than with the short scale. So we have here for the lower strings we have a larger scale, extended scale if you prefer. But when you are soloing, um, the very tone, the very tones guitars tends to be very harsh, and they don't sound as mellow as warm as, for example, uh, normal regular scaling or low short scale guitars, like for example, uh, twenty four point seventy five, like Gibsons, or twenty five or twenty five point five or four. So, if you want to have a very good uh, tension on the low strings, but also you want to have uh, some dark, or sorry, some warm um, solos with more sustain and also a benefit of something that I'm going to tell you later, you need a multi-scale. What is the other advantage? Well, if you play in classical position, that is lying your guitar on the left leg, you will play chords like this, and you, as you move across the fretboard, you see that my index finger is parallel to the frets, despite they are angled. This is why uh, the front fret is very good because you don't need to change position to accommodate to the parallel frets of the regular scaling. And also, having this benefits my angle between the forearm and my um, hand because it doesn't change all along the fretboard. They are the two benefits. These are the two benefits of the multi-scaling of the front fret system. Okay, and uh, stainless steel frets. Why stainless steel frets instead of nickel silver frets? I play all my all my life with nickel silver frets and they are good. Yeah, they are good, but the new stainless steel frets are more durable than the standard nickel silver, so it's I think it's sixty percent maybe more durable than the nickel silver, and also they add some kind of high frequencies to the tone. So if you are into the giant um, sound, or simply if you want a more modern sound, you find that the um, stainless steel frets are good for you, but for example, if you are looking for jazzy, dark, classic tones, maybe the stainless steels are not for you, okay? Continue. <clears throat> Here we have very small dots following a tangent dot curve. This, these dots <clears throat> sorry, are made of luminlay, which is a Japanese product that glows in the dark once they received a uh, certain light uh, uh, sunlight or artificial light like my 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 lightning um also we have this side dots that are made also by luminlay The pickups. The pickups are made by Barnacle in UK and this model is the Ragnarok. This is the newest addition to the Barnacle Contemporary uh, line and these are 
the um, Misha Mansur signature model. I will talk about this later. The bridge is single saddle bridge made by ABM in Germany. Single saddles, yeah. See, I can put my pick in between the saddles. Why I use or the manufacturers uses single saddles instead of one block bridge, for example, like hip shot or tone pros. Well, the single saddles have a benefit that is the string vibrates independently one from another. So if you play, if you play short, you, all your strings will vibrate independently and won't affect the vibration of the others to one of the, to any of the strings. And also, it um, allows to uh, set up very well the scale length that you want to use in the case of multi scaling. These uh, single saddles are front loaded, so you don't have to put it from behind the body. And the saddles has a bolt or a screw that allows you to move forward or backward to um, accommodate the intonation and two little screws to rise the action so you can adjust the how high or how low you will have your strings near the, um, the frets. And also they have a fourth a ball, fourth screw to lock the saddle in place so it can't move with the uh, with the plane. Okay. Next, we have here master volume okay, with hip shot O ring knob. This selector is a three-way toggle that selects bridge, both pickups, and this position is neck pickup. Yeah. So, the, the toggle nearest to the bridge is the selector of the pickups. And this, another, this selector, is the world domination mod. This is a proprietary of Skerberson and allows to extend the tonal possibilities of your guitar. Okay. In this position, we will have full humbucker sound. So, full humbucker bridge, full humbucker both pickups, and full humbucker neck. In the middle position, we will uh, have split coil. So, in this position of the selector, we will have the outer coil of the bridge in the middle. Outer coils of both pickups and here outer coil of neck pickup. And towards the neck we will have what they call the acoustic mode, which is a DPDT wiring, special wiring that they made, that uh, simulates or replicates some kind of piezo acoustic sound. So um, it tends to add brightness to the sound on the hikes and some kind of lows. Uh, it works very well with neck position and with low output pickups, like for example Varnacle BH2 and Varnacle Emerald. We hike with high output pickups, I don't like it very much because it doesn't sound as natural as with low output ones. Yep. Continuing, here we have bite on the body to locate the input jack. As you can see, if my finger represents the input jack, <coughs> the input is protected by the front popular barrel top, so if you are on a jig and uh, you are going to hit by accident 
your cable it won't um, it won't bend over here so it won't damage the electronics yep here we have Dunlop flash mount security strap lock paired with this one which is not flash mount on the tip of the headstock I prefer to have uh, my swap lock on the tip of the headstock because you can choose also to have on the back or the upper horn but on that case the guitar will tend to put it horizontally so for me when I'm playing uh, on my feet I prefer to have the neck in this position than in this position to play yes it's a matter of preferences but I prefer that way on the back part we find here what is what it seems to be a rosewood cover with the Scrivison logo inlaid well to, it's very well done so if you want to put it out you will have a problem because it's not easy not easy so you need to put down all the screws except one in the middle unscrew it a bit and then pull out the screw with the cover that's the way to remove the cover if you if we remove the cover we will find that the cavity of electronics is shielded by copper tape yeah? they don't use a cheaper or simpler method with um, anti parasite um, painting they use the more expensive copper to create the Faraday, the Faraday cage and this is more expensive because of the copper and also because of the handwork it's not as easy and not as quick as the painting and here we have a cover I think it's made of mahogany for the bridge and I said the bridge is front loaded not a, not a crossing the body so why this cover yeah a problem with the single saddles bridge is when you want to put the um, or it's called um, to avoid the ha the hum of the um, of the ground of the ground guiding uh, you need to um, wire all the saddles together because if you left one without the ground wiring you will have the ham so <clears throat> you need to make a routine for that wire and put um, that wire on all the saddles so if you can see here we have small screws and around them there are, there is copper wire so to put all the wire and to put all the screws we need this cover right next I'm going to talk is about the weight of the guitar the guitar weights uh, 3 kilos and 433 grams if I'm not mistaken it's not very heavy it's not as weight as light as for example made of swampage or ash but it's not heavy for me it's it was heavy the first time I grabbed it because I, I was used to more light scarves and guitars but it's not heavy at all three less than three kilos and a half is affordable for my for my back and uh, now I'm going to talk about the neck shape this is a modern D the D the D shape uh, has two shoulders let's, let's make a D vertical one shoulder round part and one shoulder okay you have you will find the shoulders here and the round part it's not made of the same um, same radius 
So we have here what is called the asymmetric profile, which is thin or thinner on the low strings and thicker on the high strings. I think it's very similar to Eddie Van Halen's Wolfhands, but uh, inverted. I think he has the thicker part on the low strings. And here we have the thinner part on the low strings. And I think this is all about the specifications except the finish. Yep, this is a satin matte finish which I chose because it maintains the colors very natural. It uh, doesn't add um, light spots or bright spots to to the real finish, so the the colors are very natural. And this is a very cool burst from natural yellow to red to some kind of dark black burst. I call this Inferno Red Burst. I don't know if Skrivelson calls it the same way. <clears throat> this bevel is for arm, arm rest and this one is for accessing the last threads on all the strings. As you can see, I have a small hands and I can easily play on all the strings and all the threads. I can even play here on the neck pickup. Yeah? If you have a dark body boot, um, solid or burst finish and the top boot is a lighter color than the body, if you make the bevel you will have this particular binding, natural binding, very cool all along the body. I love it. Yeah? I totally love it. And this combined to this radical shape of the guitar makes this, makes this piece of this instrument very unique. This reminds me a lot of a modern jazz master, but with a twist. I like it very much. Okay, guitar construction quality. Well, this is awesome. Totally awesome guitar. I haven't find I haven't found any flaw on it. First, I'm going to talk is the joint of the neck and the body. As you can see, there's no gaps here. No even a dust can enter in between the body and the neck. That's very good because that allows the transmission of the vibrations from the neck to the body to go to go freely and better. If you have a, a very small gap you will lose a lot of vibrations and this is transmitted then to the output jack so it's better to have a very good uh, neck body joint. The second is the fret leveling or the fret work. Yeah, Skerverson is very proud <coughs> to have a very very good leveling. The accuracy is 0.002 millimeters which is very good for being for not being made by plaque machines. They are made by hand. So in this particular guitar, I have a, neck, a very low action. Actually, I have a 1.5 millimeters on the 12th fret seventh string, and having in mind that this is a baritone scaling, 27 inches scale, ver this is very good because the standard would be on other companies I won't mention um, 1.7 to 1.8 or even 2 millimeters on the 12th fret so that's very cool why I want to have a low action because when I'm playing a note above 12th fret to the, from 12 to the 24th I don't want my fingers to have a very large um, journey from the string to the fret so I can pull the string, sorry, pull, push the string 
and node appears quickly and also I don't want to have the string that, that is uh, above my finger to have in the middle of the nail I want to have it just almost at the same level as the one I am touching so that's why fret leveling is so important also the fret end is very important because when you have a rough fret ends it will hurt your fingers well, and here I have to make a note I have rough frets here but I don't consider it a flaw why? in this particular case with scurvies and guitars it always happened the same to me they are based in Poland where climate and humidity is very different from where I live near Bilbao in Spain, the north of Spain I'm not in the south where there is a lot of hot I live in a very cold and very um, wet weather and when I received my older Scrivison guitars they all were rough on the fret ends and because the woods tend to expand or sink due that humidity and temperature changes uh, it is stable um, after some time on my house they stabilized and the fret end became more and more natural and not rough so after a month or a month and a half they became totally totally without roughness and I think this will be the same case because when I received it it was more rough than it is now a week and a half ago a week and a half later sorry I'm not an English speaker so some expressions and some words are difficult for me so I'm sorry if I'm committing a lot of mistakes as I said uh, now it's less rough than a week and a half ago so this is not a flaw for me it's rough but it is changing and apart from that I won't tell anything about the construction it is exceptional yeah really really good now about the sound well this is very personal you can like or not the sound you are given by the pickups well Ragnarok pickups are new are very modern and also very aggressive sounding pickups sometimes they can sound harsh um, when I received the guitar both pickups were at the same level and with us with my old scurvacing they were so low compared to the string height so the bridge I um, raised the bridge one after playing one hour or so I discovered that I needed to lower down it again because it sounded so moody um, they designed these pickups to be very fat sounding very aggressive to have some kind of mm, controlled lows but if you um, if you raise the pickup you will find that you you will have a very um, a very large amount of output because this is for a very high output uh, pickup and that becomes the sound to be moody and I don't like it very much I prefer it to have less output but more clear so um, I recommend you if you have um, a guitar made of mahogany like this not to raise a lot of this pickup probably on a lighter a lighter guitar like Ash or Sunbass you can have it rise it but in this particular case not 
uh, you will find on the demo, it's a very crappy demo, as all my, my videos, that the sound is very, um, very aggressive. Uh, I try to make a fair comparison between uh, the rhythm tones with one of um, one song from one of my bands and the clean tones. The clean tones are kind of good. Some are sterile sounding clean, but definitely clean. They're, they're, they don't break the sound, for example, at Black Hawks. But they are not as good, as, for example, as Aftermaths. So I won't talk about sound very much because, as I said, it's very personal. And if you like the demo, I hope you will like the demo, you will find that there are a lot of more demo sounds on YouTube showing better than me the capabilities of these pickups. Um, also, um, I will ask for for your forgiveness about the sound demo. I became stupid every time I hit the rec button. I commit a lot of mistakes, so I'm sorry for that. And hope I hope you enjoyed this review. It's over, and I hope you will enjoy the demo sound that will come later. If you want to see this review in Spanish, you can watch my my YouTube channel. You will find here the review of this guitar in a Spanish language, as well as many other high-end guitars. I'm making new reviews soon. For example, I have a Horse Behind Machine Custom Shop for next week or so, and also an Aristides and something and something more. So stay tuned for more and thank you for watching.